Well, hello and welcome to Michelle Holden Art, where you explore, play, and discover your true art one layer at a time. And um, the focus for this channel is, um, I call it intuitive art journeys, but it's uh, intuitive art, it's intuitive abstract art journaling, which I've mentioned many times before, but welcome. And we're going to get right to it. This week's video is, well, where do I start? How do I start? And this year, when I was going through all my flip through pages, I realized that I really loved that I recorded my thoughts and thinking and my materials as to what I used. And I wish I um, also recorded the layers, the sequence of layers, as it's all about the layers in my my um, intuitive art process. So I decided to let's follow this more closely, uh, you know, within reason. So this is my intention today. And my intention is to use blue and orange. And I'll show you my collage pieces that I've selected for today's possible usage. And let's see if sticking to this mostly that can I produce this again? Can I do the same? It's it's not the exact thing I want. It's the feel that I'm looking for. So um, stay to the end. And I have a very special um, new PDF to offer you. And it's all, I call it the Intuitive Art Journal Reflections, which I wish I had done for all of my pages. So um, let's get creating. So um, I wrote down the layers, pencil marks, marks with another tool, mostly my China marker. And it's things that you like to do and you want to keep as your sort of your voice, your signature style. So now it's taken time to develop. So this doesn't happen overnight. It's just something that, well, I really like doing that. I want to keep keep that in my process. A large mark, which I put the word contrast beside. I'll just show you, the get a little closer. Here we go, that's better. And um, WS graphite, water soluble graphite. And then I want to veil it. Then right after the veiling, I want a stencil, some kind of stencil. Then I want to color some areas. And then I want to hold off adding my collage, not until after I have some color this time. And then finishing off with pastel and possible dots. So let's see what happens. So I'm just going to set that to the side. But somewhere where I can see it. And pencil marks, okay. Well, I love my pencil marks. And I love cropping them off the edge, going very light, and not doing too many tight spaces and open spaces. That's what I love. And Next was marks with something else. So I'm going to get my China marker out. Very easy. Difficult to peel. So we're not going to worry about that right now. That's it. I also, I was cleaning my studio and I rearranged it quite a bit differently. So um, um, I'll be showing different little episodes of that on my Instagram, if you follow me. I create Instagram posts because I love doing them. And of course, to lead everybody back to my YouTube channel, which is the main hub for everything intuitive abstract art journaling with Michelle Holden, of course. So this carpenter pencil I discovered during my cleanup. And what's really cool about it is it's longer on one end than the other. I'm just trying to, there you go. Okay, and then when you add different pressures, 
Now you see already, this wasn't in, Let's see, I didn't plan it, but I know I wanted this kind of pencil mark and see how the, it just makes me do something different. And I'm gonna use my left hand because I'm right-handed. Now, of course, when you're starting your own intuitive art journaling practice, intuitive abstract art journaling practice, you're not going to, you know, all this kind of stuff, the, the narration and everything that I'm that I'm doing right now, it's, I do it naturally now, and I can follow my intuition, my gut feeling, my whatever you want to call that, your inner voice, your higher self. Um, you really want to set up a place that's quiet, you're comfortable in, it's good lighting, and that you can return to on a daily-ish basis. So that's really important. So next was a large mark. Okay. I think I'm going to use my color shaper. And I think I'm going to go for a high contrast. Let's see. Can you see my mixing? So I chose to ditch for now. The, uh, because now I can lift it easily and show you my color mixing. Plus at the end, when I use up all the paint or not, I roll it with my brayer and mix it up and it becomes collage. So your paint palette paper, Strathmore 40 sheets, can become a really interesting piece of collage. And you don't want to think. You want to respond. And on the side, which is past the palette paper, I've got different, um, during my cleanup, I discovered some more collage that, well, this is just one layer from my jelly plate. So I thought, well, I'll use this for cleaning my brushes off, rolling any excess from my brayer and let that build up. And it may or may not be, um, most likely, uh, a really interesting piece of collage as well. I'm also using old books. This is like an old home repair book. I really like the diagram kind of idea. So if I cover that with paint, it might turn out to be really cool collage that I can use. And everything's rolling into the paint. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, wow, a really cool high contrast area. And I said water-soluble graphite. So here's my tools. And I think I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna dip it in some water. That's it. Because when I, I'm gonna dry it, but if when I add paint over it, it's gonna sort of blend in and get a little, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but a little blended. And I might do that now, just with a damp brush. See what might, oh yeah. So then that you gets rid of any white from the paper. So I just want a few strokes like that. So now I'll dry this, these layers. So right now we have one, two, three layers. Okay, a correction, four. Because now we're down to one, 
two, three, and the graphite layer is four. So now I need to veil it. Okay. I like to veil with a color shaper right here. And as I was cleaning yesterday, I realized, you know what? I've let a lot of paint build up on my art tools. And I, I didn't clean them uh, perfectly, but even on the ends of my awl or my brayer, which was totally built up. So I cleaned all that up. My razor blade, uh, this thing, it is a little rusty, um, but it was covered in paint, so it's cleaned up. So it's important to keep all of your tools clean. Uh, don't let them soak too long in water because then you'll be going through a lot of brushes. Okay, so back to the page. Veiling. So of course I don't wanna veil the whole thing. I think I wanna veil the upper third of the page. So let's see. And I'm gonna show you different ways to do this. So you can use half of a little card here with some white. And you're going to, oh, I can't really see that. So on your palette, you want to spread it out. And that's probably a lot. I'm just going to show you a credit because it's important that you start, so you can start right away, use what you ha already have at home. So simple. If you don't have water-soluble graphite, that's okay. Just use a pencil, a thick pencil, a, a tiny thin pencil. Um, if you don't have a needle like this, you can use a nail. You can use anything to scrape. And I forgot about these. So um, I'm gonna add those in with my mark making, maybe near the end. So here we go. So see how it veils. And this is a dry surface. And there's even a texture building up. So now I'm gonna show you I'm gonna just spritz it with a little water. And I'm gonna use the slightly wider color shaper. And look how smooth that is, and I'm liking that so much better. It's thinner, it does affect that graphite. Love that, blurs it. And I'm even gonna make it a little more opaque here. And notice just the angle of the, the shaper itself, you can redirect, change, and I want to go up on a slight angle. It just adds dynamics. And see when you do that? I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to go this way. And I've created a texture by skimming across, which you can also get by using one of these. This is almost like a small version of the trowel effect. So let's try it. So you wanna just put some on there and you wanna just, and if you oh, get that out of there, lift it. And this will take a few minutes to dry since it's thick and I want to when you just skim it across like that, there we go. There's the effect I'm looking for. Now, I don't like that. It's too thick. So I'm just going to scratch through it. And you see when I'm scraping off the paint onto whatever old paper you have. And just you're not even thinking. The layers will build up and you'll have really cool collage. So already it's building up. an awl, a pen, uh, the other side of your brush, anything. So I'm gonna keep the horizontal left to right going. Now, I don't wanna do it to the whole thing. Perfect, oh, there. Okay. So now, of course, this layer needs to be dried before we move on to the next one. Okay. 
Okay. So while I'm drawing, I usually, I get to do some, um, just a little bit of thinking, because you're sort of spun out there, um, spinning out, meaning from your intuitive mode of just responding. And I think I always like to put a little bit of a veil down here, just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So next was either a stencil or stamping, another form of, of a pattern. So that's what I could have put instead. Instead of putting veil and then stencil, it's veil and pattern. Um, it can be line, shapes. Uh, you know that I love my circles. I love bubble wrap, but I like to just use it partially. And this time, I think I'm going to use color. making a little room here. I'm still not happy with enough room on this giant table that I have. It still doesn't seem to be enough, which is crazy, but that's okay. Oh, I said color. So I'm gonna add, this is yellow oxide. Yes, I like this. More of a creamy. So it's, it's practically Naples yellow when you add enough white to it. And as you can see, I don't want it, I want it very spontaneous. And I'm just gonna do that. Cool. Okay. So then I might go further add more of a stencil with something even a, a little more solid. And you know that I love my dots. I love my cracks, the cracks there. I'm really liking, liking this shape. And I'm going to use a sponge. I'm just going to dampen it and then squeeze out any excess. I've been experimenting with different ways to get crisp edges. I think I like it right here. And I don't like it totally solid. So let's see what happens here. But I like the edges to be quite clear, hard edged. interesting but I didn't finish it I see okay I think we'll do this way Like a dry brush technique. Okay, I like how they're diff all three are different, but from the same stencil. Okay. 
Now, what did I say next? Color. Now, I did use that. We'll dry this first. Okay. You notice I chose some blue because I love my orange and blue. But this one, I, I just, it's not calling for blue. So I'm just going to get rid of that to the side. Loving that. Loving that. And that, just part of it. Some, so it's going to turn out to be mostly neutral with a little orange. Cool. As you can see, still with my circles, part of old sewing patterns. Love those. Hard to find now. I had so many and I threw them out way before I knew I was going to be doing this. So here's an interesting point. Veiling, stenciling. I know this isn't a color, but it is a value. And I really should change that right now. Color areas or value. Uh, light, dark. So that's what I want. Notice I'm creating more um, more interesting layers of transparency when I'm putting something as transparent as tissue paper or this type of paper over a very high contrast area and having little peaks in there is sort of cool. So I'm going to put that right there. And I'm going to use the soft gel. This is a semi-gloss. Found it in my... Oh, I don't know. Okay, we'll just use this then. This excess that I have here. And I think it's a little better to use a softer medium for the thinner papers. <clears throat> And see how it just disappears. Oh, a little yellow got on there, but that's okay because that's part of the palette that I'm choosing. And I'm careful now to not drag the metal when I go at uh, too shallow of a, an angle. And that's what does the tearing. So I think that's helping these days. Okay, I like that. Okay, this is gloss medium, and it's older and it's thickened up, so that's what I'm using. Remember, art journaling, or at least my purpose for this is to explore. And I do, and am in, intend to do, take what I've learned onto the next. And uh, I'm calling it beyond, just beyond. As I've, you've seen me create a series of small abstracts I think I made about 11 there with the, the last um, black, white, yellow, very simple, simple palette. Uh, you would call it more monochromatic. And it's, uh, oh, I still love them. And um, it starts with a very large sheet of watercolor paper. But anyway, coming soon. And uh, so stay tuned. So if you have, if you are new here, welcome. And this is a great way to get started. Um, I know that on my channel, there's experienced artists, novices, so many people at different stages. But 
it isn't all of it. It isn't about the journal in the end. I'm I'm not a you know this isn't to create art journals for yourself though this is an art journal, but it's for different purposes. It's to explore, play, and discover your true voice using abstract art, the elements. Uh, so we're, it's non-representational, and uh, filling up your art journals and learning about all of the different layers, all of your different marks, uh, as much as your own voice as you can put into everything. While you're creating those uh, collages, you're learning along the way as well. So, okay, I'm loving this. Um, it needs a little drying. So we'll dry that and we'll go on to the next layer. Okay, so the next layer I said, we did some value. <coughs> Excuse me. Now for some collage. And we might come back to a different value. I know I want to put this in somewhere. I don't know if I want to go across like I usually do. I want to do something different. And you see what I do with my collage? What's speaking to me? Oh, this one. And this one. Okay. Mm. I think I want to do something like this is very interesting. Or see how it's neutral here or this neutral tone. And then I like how it says, and, and some, uh, sometimes the words turn out really cool. I think I don't want to cover too much of that up, but so we'll do this. Give it a little trim. That's good. Right there. That looks dried up, but this is a uh, Liquitex, the um, heavy, oh yeah, no, it's done. <laughs> okay, overlook that during cleanup. There we go. Oh, brand new, nice. And it's so funny when you're cleaning up your studio, you you uh, sometimes you can find duplicates or triplicates of what you thought you didn't have. <laughs> so we're good with the high gloss medium. Perfect. Oh yeah, no, I had an overlap before, didn't I? Duh. Yeah, cause it, yeah, I like that. So it did get covered, but not totally. So learning to let go. Gosh, that learning to let go part sure takes a while. At least it did for me. What about you? I'd love to hear about that. So my word for this year, last year was clarity. I don't know if any of you choose a word. Um, my word for this year is trust. Uh, now that I've, I'm moving forward, I'm taking actionable steps, I'm doing all this stuff, now I need to, uh, or we, people, stop second-guessing ourselves, trust the process. So the first process you can start learning to trust is your art journaling process. So it's great. It's so reflective in our lives, and uh, it mirrors so many things. <clears throat> Oof. look at that now I don't know if I'm going to use the whole thing oh look at this see, I love when this happens see that angle I want to echo that and now look at this interesting shape which is now that is so cool wow love it serendipity Yep, that's how it is. 
and when, um, because the topic of in intuition, intuitive art making, anything to do with intuition or following our inner, our inner guide uh, is such a fascinating, fascinating subject that I could talk about all the time. But I keep hearing this word, intuition, layers of meaning, all of this stuff in so many different aspects of life, online, socials, um, everybody's talking about it. It's, uh, I just think it's the era that we're in during our awakening and uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So, isn't that interesting? So, it goes well in here. It adds on. So, now we're, you know, we're about topped up with the high contrast marks. But it's it's so cool. And this curl and that curl. I don't know about those two things. I might see if I cover one, calm down one. This, which is my focus in a way, shows up more. So... I'll just leave this out. That's when you can veil. Clarify. So now I do do that which is a very fine mist and you can really just skim across the edge dab that up oh too much now and now different shapes are starting to show up okay and that's what I call intuitive composition. So I let, uh, my intention today was, how do I start and use a sequence of layers that I can, um, you know, write them down so I can remember them to do them again? Because if I want to stay exploring this type of sequence, I need to remember what it was. And so important to write these things down either before or after your page. And I have a, uh, I have a reflection, uh, and like I said earlier, and I'll be offering that um, as a PDF, and I'll be using it um, at the end of this video. So, and just briefly, so please stay to the end. Okay. Wow. Loving that so far. So it needs a, a pop of color of some kind. Yeah, I love this stuff. This is just that scrapbooking paper because it's so close to that to that color. <clears throat> But I like torn edges. See, when you tear it that way, you don't get the white. But when you t lift it up, you do get a white edge. And I like playing with that as well. Yeah, right there. Oh, interesting. Phantom whale. And I love finding old texts of different types with interesting, it just sort of shows up. <laughs> totally unplanned. <clears throat> this is a bit much. So I'm going to scale, I'm going to veil that a little bit. Bring down the contrast, in other words. Oh, and I noticed I didn't use my neutral um, titanium, that 
neutral one. And that's okay. So we're just going to use white. The little. Okay. I like the white better. So we'll. Oh. Okay then. Okay. Now, yes, will this fit in? Nope, it's not gonna. Need something a little more colorful with some text. See, we've got enough text in here. So now these two are fighting, so that won't go. That won't go. Don't think we need that. I think we're moving into a different mark, which is now dots or circles. Maybe a little piece of this one. Notice these shapes are so similar, but that isn't going to work. But I'm going to overlap that. Perfect. So there's a bubble in there, but that's okay. It's just a journal. There we go. Okay. Now, it looks like we're, like I said, we're not using the blue. I don't want, just, it's not gonna go. And here, it's a painting behind me, my big one, that's been inspiring me. But nope, because it has way more blue in it. Ooh. See, this piece just showed up. Hmm. No, it sticks out too much. Nope, nope, nope. Let's see. I'm not sure. I love the tone of orange. Oh. Seems to be too much now. Okay, we are gonna do some ah collage pastel, pastel. All right. Oh, let's see. I've got these. Called. They're gallery oil pastel and they're water soluble. Aquarelle. Isn't that crazy? They're oil, but they're water soluble. Okay, I'm going to use. Ooh. So this is just like line, another layer. Beautiful. See how that warmth just added to it? Just a little. See, that's a little yellow. Okay, that's okay. Let's see the orange. Not too much. Okay. Just testing that. How water soluble is it? Which is sort of cool for like a glazing at the end. Okay, we'll save those to the side. I think I want to do some glazing. But I want to use this a little bit of yellow in here. Mm -hmm. 
I've been really with the yellow and black and if you've been keeping up with my uh, pages. So see how that pushes that back. Now I love how shapes start to evolve. <laughs> That's Dexter. He's getting impatient. So that's now, see how that's uh, going too much? So I'm going to bring that over. So now, I wish I had a little more white. Okay, I think I'm gonna use some white. I love this, uh, it's really developing more and more paint on it. And it's, uh, Pretty cool, my cardboard. I like to use just a damp brush, this one. Just any one, really. Hmm. I say this side. Not enough. Okay, let's try that again. I've done this before. Where it's okay, let's see. Okay, we're just gonna leave it. I'm gonna dry this and we're coming near the end. need some black. Yep. I need to, some negative space. Not white. I just have my paper towel up here as a dabber. Okay, so something tells me. And it's sort of a glaze. See, I didn't like that shape, sort of juxtaposing in. Let's do it. Let's do this one. Okay. And this is the cool t time where things get pushed back and pulled forward. See that? So bringing out different areas, positive, negative space. So I know that wasn't on there. That's okay. See, and I love the brayer because it, sometimes I like brush strokes and sometimes I don't. Let's thicken that up a bit. I need something dark in this corner here.
Yeah, that's it. And I know I've been saying, well, it only takes 20 minutes. Uh, it only takes a half an hour. It does. It does. When I'm not doing any talking and I'm just responding. So next week, if um, please stay tuned, I'm going to be starting. I don't know if it's going to be separate from these weekly videos or a timed one. So I'm going to set the clock for 20 minutes. And... Um, I'm just going to read, uh, it, it's going to be a slightly smaller one, uh, page, no edges, just respond, just go after choosing some things and it, it's, oh, you can get amazing results that way, uh, but it isn't about the results. You can get, learn so much. And then of course, reflecting, keeping some notes so you can remember. Okay, I'm going to stop there, so I've learned. Okay, so I just uh, sped that up, dabbed it, and I know it lifted it a bit, but I think that's really good because I'm going to come in with those last things, some dots. I usually like to use Pasca, Pasca markers or gel pens near the end. So let's see what I have. Of course, we have the gold, which I love. And I'm just going to make. Some interesting texture. Don't want to do too much. And of course, you really need to make sure your layer is dry or you'll ruin your pens. So I hope mine is. needs a little something. That's really cool. Here. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Right there. So I put it near another orange value so it wouldn't be that uh, high contrast or so low. So now we're adding interest. I think we need a little swoosh of some orange, yellow, and white.
Okay. Ooh. So I hardly put any on my brush. I'm going to add more water. There we go. Okay, let's dry this page. Okay. So before I put the tape on, I like to put a glaze, a gloss medium, I mean, not a glaze, on the paper. And it helps it from bleeding through my tape for a nice clean edge. Oh, it bled through there a bit. That's okay. So I don't get any paper tearing. I get tape tearing. But it usually can be lifted like so. You can also use an X-Acto knife to get under the edge. See. Oh good, see that? It just wiped right off. Because oh, not that one, but mostly. Okay. So that was today's. How can I stay in line with some layers, go off a little bit? And um how do you start? Uh and how do you remember your layering process and what you did? So I will be writing on the back. And what I have, what I've been making, so I thought, well, what about a cool guide that's sort of like this? You can just print out the paper itself and write directly on your uh, the back of the previous art journal page. And then, pay, or you can just fill this out and just take aspects of it and then, um, you know, um, write what you can. I can trust myself. I am. Uh, usually the I am is usually how you're feeling. It's a positive affirmation. I am painting in peace and joy. However you're feeling, whatever comes to mind. My materials because, uh, and tools are very important as to how you made those layers. The layers would be as such. So you might want to just keep this page, write down the points, and I will have more than one version available. And um, I would just glue that down. I'd write the date. And re I realized too that when I was looking at 2023, there's a lot of them that I didn't write. And I so regret it because I do so many now, I just virtually forget. But I'm lucky that I have a YouTube video to go back and watch, and uh, but not all of us do this. So my intention for this page was to um, use a sequence of layers and write them down so I don't forget them. Techniques that I tried, a large brush stroke, I tried glazing, and I tried putting in values. Thoughts, feelings, or emotions. Well, what would my thoughts, feelings, and emotions be for this page? It went smooth. I was calm. Um, I liked it. I learned that you don't have to stick to it, literally. You can, you can use color or black. However you want to fill that out and then take a moment to reflect on your intuitive art journaling pages. 
what thoughts and feelings are present. And I just jot those down. And any time that you feel like um, perusing through your art journal, I always add more notes in the end. So if, you're, if you find value in this PDF, and if you found value in this video and all of my videos, please remember to subscribe, like, and share as I plan to grow this channel, go further, develop lessons and courses um, to help everyone discover the true, their true art, their true voice, one layer at a time. I'll see you in the next video.